Hi Felters and welcome. Today I'm going to do a pumpkin challenge. I'm going to take these three pumpkins and try and needle felt them as realistically as possible. Hopefully I can do it. Let's get started. So first off I have loosely felted the shapes because it's a bit boring for you to have to watch me do all of that. Um, I've used my new Barve wool order which is down there. It's a huge order and that's all on my vlog if you want to know about that. These are the colours I have selected for each one. This is a perfect colour from Claire's Crafts Creates but unfortunately that's all I have of it so I'm going to try and do a bit of carding. So, so I took a couple of the colours that I had for the perfect orange and I carded it myself. I will link the carded video at the end if you want to know a bit more. So the pumpkins are still really squidgy. They didn't take long to form the bases, so I'm just taking the colour and I'm applying it over with my multi-needle tool. I have a video on multi-needle tools as well, if you want to know what's a good multi-needle tool to have. So I've covered it all up, it's slightly larger than the base. And now I've firmed it a bit and now I'm going to go around with a single needle and there I've smoothed it all over. It took a while, these things do. So we're going to move on to doing the creases. Um, to make it look as realistic as possible. So I centered it and then I take um, the needle and I it's a 38 so it's quite a big needle. Don't use a fine needle for this because you're sort of dragging it as as you go to get the straight line a little bit um, and this uh, it might break if it was a thin needle. So once you've made the mark all the way down with repeated stabbing it doesn't take too long I'm taking a slightly darker color and I'm just gonna it just sort of emphasizes it and adds a bit of shading and it works really really well it it doesn't have to be an exact orange um, this one was a fox color I think so it did work very well but just look at the colors you've got um, and there we go there's the first one made so I'm going to go around and do the rest of them so there's about halfway through. I'm trying to follow the lines of the pumpkin quite well so that it looks realistic. And then here I've put some light on. Now, I, was, I didn't know whether this would work or not, but you see how the light reflects off this one. It's really shiny. So on one half of it, I just put a few bits of cream. So now we're going to do the stalk. So I took some brown. I carded it a little bit with some green. And we just roll it up really tightly and then start felting it. Um, the stalk's sort of quite even all the way up. Leave the end of it fluffy so that you can attach it. There we can see it's a little bit too brown, so I add a bit of green on the outside. This is all about trying to look and, and see, so this is why it's a really good challenge. So there we go, it's a little bit greener. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm not gonna cre recreate them exactly, but it's good to try. And then the top of the stalk has got um, some white on it. So start felting it on. And then I did take a finer needle to try and get all the little bits and pieces in. And there we go. It's looking not too bad. Just had to make it a tiny bit thinner. A roll between the hands helped as well. And then place it where you want. And I wanted it at the same angle as well, sort of bending over slightly. So there we are just attaching it on. Just checking it and seeing if I'm happy with everything there and and there we go that's the first one done and the color match was really good I had trouble with the next color match because I ran out so this is the next one and again I've um, done the base or it's bigger because when you felt something down it goes down by about a third so this color I was trying to use and I didn't have enough of it and it wasn't exact either but I had um, lots of gaps so unfortunately, oh, here I am. I had to go downstairs to look after the puppies because they were it's quite early in the morning. Um, so I had to put a different colour on top and then I just smoothed it over. It's not perfect. We've just got to imagine it's a bit more orange than it is. So I smoothed it all over. It's the smoothing over, which takes a long time. And then if you look, there's a couple of sort of lighter colours in it. So I'm going to use that a little bit later. So now we're going to draw the lines all the way down. And again, this took time. There were a lot of lines. They're not going to be as deep as the other ones, and I'm not going to put shading in them. So go from the top to the bottom so you know where the middle is. I middled the top and middled the bottom, and then I dragged the needle all the way down. Now, I did think this would take a long, long time, but it wasn't, it wasn't horrendous. 
Um, so if you do one on one side, then go and do the other one on the other side and then do the quarters and then subdivide and subdivide. And that is the best way to get your lines on a pumpkin. I can promise you that makes your pumpkin really even. If you try and do a pumpkin and then do a line, a centimeter and then another centimeter, sometimes it doesn't quite work out at the end, but this worked really well. I don't show you all of them. It's just quite pleasant to watch someone do all the work and do all the lines in, in a speeded up version. So I went between them again. It did take a while, <laughs> I guess. So there we go. It's just sort of trying to give the effect. And then um, all the sort of lighter coloured little spots and dots, I took a tiny amount of that uh, sort of dull yellow and I, I put it over. Not all of them, just quite a few of them. So next we go on to the stalk. And again, I um, roll up the brown and then I put the green on the outside of it. I didn't card it all together. I just added the green really um, thin layer of the green on the outside to sort of give the effect. And then again, quite a bit of felting, felting it down. And then this uh, stalk, when we look at it again in a minute, it sort of had ridges all the way up and uh, there were light bits uh, along the ridges. So I did light bits to create the ridges and then I put um, some white on the top again where it's been cut through. And I was trying to sort of force the ridges a bit there. No, it's not too bad. And then I attached it. And at the base of the attachment, it had um, a green line all the way around. So that was quite easy to replicate. I just got some green, twirled it between my fingers and then put it all around the bottom there. And then I sort of played around with the top of it to try and make it look a bit flatter. I added a bit more white because it wasn't quite going to the edges. And then I tried to make it look cut, but it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. So there's two of them. So we're getting there. And the last one I thought would be the most fun one, and it was quite interesting. So we're putting a cream layer on first and then green on the top. It's up to you. You could do it either way. Um, I just think it works well to add the dark on after. So I applied it all loosely, covered it all, and then spent quite a long time. So I firmed it up once more with the multi-needle tool and then went all the way around and it's so lovely and smooth and you can do a bit of forcing with your hands to try and get the shape um, and then we're going to start by doing the green now I started this really tentatively and really did little bits and then I really got into it <laughs> so I started with a single needle and applied it on and really you can do it any odd way but to get the dents the clover pen was brilliant because it was really strong, really forceful, and it did it really quickly. So the clover pen was so good. So I've added all the bits and I've still got some gaps that I'm filling in with lots of little green dots to try and make it look as realistic. So again, the clover pen came out and then I added, um, it had sort of lighter patterns and just to give it a bit of variation, a bit of shading, I added a lighter green onto the dark green. It actually looked a bit too dark green, my green. Then it had some orange on the top. And again, like I said, this is all about looking at your pumpkin. And then see there, I've just done the little top bit as well. And I'm just gonna sort of neaten it over because it had a few sort of fluffy bits sticking out. So did I do it? Well, let's see. I think it was okay. They're not too bad. Had that other one been more orange, it would have been fine. So I hope you've enjoyed this challenge. I think it's good. Just find a pumpkin that you really like and try and recreate it as best you can. Don't choose a massive one. But I just think it's a really good challenge to help you try and work on your skills. And I'm going to take these to the craft fair and put them side by side and see if people notice. If you want to know about carding, click on the video at the top and I'll meet you over there. If you want to know about my uh, business, click on the studio vlog. And I'm doing a needle felted gnome kit from the makers next, so do subscribe. Thanks for watching everybody and see you soon.